So GPUs. Yeah. Okay. So let's yeah. see. We're right here. Uh, would you like for me to share the screen, or would you like to? Uh, you oh, can share can. it. I can then run the example. Yeah. So, Simo, what's a GPU, and why is it the thing that everyone talks about? Yeah, so GPUs, or graphical processing units, or sometimes GP, GPUs, or general purpose graphical processing units, because people love acronyms, uh, they are uh, these extension cards that are basically, uh, they can do certain types of calculations really fast. So the graphical, in the graphic, in, uh, graphical processing unit doesn't necessarily mean that they can only do graphics, but that's the historical reason. Like uh, when people started doing 3D graphics for gaming and stuff, stuff like that, or visualization for like CAD, CADs, so, so like, Computer, computer assisted design or animation or something like that. They um, they had to do a lot of vector calculations, so lots of calculations with numbers, lots of rotations. Like if you need to move a triangle and you need to draw a, draw a monster somewhere, you need to do a lot of calculations and uh, and really fast. You need to do lots of like multiple calculations of vectors and matrices. So and would at you some say... point. Would you say it's correct yep. that basically the whole thing was designed to do these vector calculations very efficiently, unlike yeah. the typical, unlike the processors, the Intel architecture processors we've ended up with? Yes. So, so, so the architecture was designed. Uh, like, I'm not certain if if GPUs are like Turing complete or something like that, like computational stuff, mm -hmm. like theoretical. I, I'm not certain about that. Like, can you run an operating system on a GPU? I don't know. But the main idea is that like the hardware level, like how the actual processor has been designed, it's been designed to like pump as many of these calculations as possible. Whereas like a normal processor, like, like the Intel or AMD processor that you most likely have, in your computer, or maybe like a um, what's it M M M two M hundred? What's the a Apple one? Mm, the can't remember. Is it M one or the or yeah, well, yeah or, the... or, or other one like that you have in the phone? Those are like general purpose uh, processing units. So they can do all kinds of stuff. They can calculate numbers. They can add strings together. They can like do all kinds of like itty bitty small small things. Uh, and they can, of course, calculate lots of big numbers as well, and lots of additions and multiplications that, like you have in, let's say, simulation mm -hmm. codes. But when you are talking about graphical processing units and, and what they can do is like, let's say you have a huge bunch of numbers and uh, in a matrix, and then you want to multiply that with a huge bunch of numbers in another major matrix or a bunch of numbers, mm -hmm. and you want to do that fast, or you want to like. Yeah, do that kind of operations uh, a, a lot fast, and many operations you can reduce to these kinds of operations. So, so you want to, you can reduce to these matrix calculations. Then, the, the you can uh, do it fast on the GPU, and this whole field exploded when people realized that okay, you can train AI models and deep learning especially on the GPUs. So everybody got really interested in, in AI uh, because they realized that, OK, it's basically matrix calculations all the way. And, and like let's, they can write it as, as, as matrix calculations. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess it's um, like the use of the GPUs has gone in step when people were able to write more algorithms in a way that could use it. Like, for yes. example, these, well, GPU started with what graphical processing, and sometime people realized, oh, I can do molecular dynamics on GPUs, and then suddenly that becomes the thing. So it's like, it's not, yeah. yeah, yeah. And nowadays there's a huge bunch of software that can utilize them. But the important thing to realize is that, like, because it's so related to the hardware, like everything is related to the hardware and how the hardware is organized. There's usually like libraries that you can then utilize to make it easier to code on this but but it's different than normal program that you run on a on a computer the gpu programs need to like 
be written for the specific GPUs, mm -hmm. usually even to the specific card or type of a GPU that mm -hmm. you're utilizing, because everything is uh, like written in terms of like this low level machine code that, mm -hmm. that can run very fast. And this yeah. means that the program, like similarly that we mentioned with the MPI standard, like programs that utilize the MPI standard, programs that use GPUs are written usually for GPUs and they are written even to, to the level of certain types of GPUs, certain kinds of GPUs. Mm -hmm. And and it's it gets it's usually very specialized and you need to make certain that your program supports the GPUs. Mm -hmm. So, so either you need to like uh, install, well, you need to usually install a, 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 like a program mm -hmm. that has support for the GPU usage in order mm -hmm. to be able to use the GPU. So how often times do people these days write their own GPU code, like say at the C level? And how often are people using codes that have already been made for GPU by someone else? That's an excellent point. Nowadays, it's getting to the point where there start to be more and more like already existing GPU codes that you don't have to do it yourself. Like Python, uh, like the like all of the deep learning stuff, like TensorFlow and PyTorch, they are they utilize uh, libraries, so you don't have to look at the GPU code. If you, if you are running MATLAB, there's the GPU array, so you don't have to think about the GPU code. If you are using some physics programs, you usually need to tell it to just compile with GPU and then it can use GPU like lumps or CP2K or something. And many of these we provide already. And like most of the programs, they just utilize the GPU if they've been uh, made to be aware of the GPU when they have been installed. And, and the support is increasing. So most likely you won't ever compile gpu code yourself but if you do of course more power to you yeah but but if you're basically if you code can utilize gpu you can try to use gpus in the cluster and now we can get closer to the point of how do you actually use the gps in the cluster and uh, the the main i have one point... more comment there so okay. i guess even though there's many things that are already writ written do people end up needing to somehow script it together? Like, I guess if you're using, say, TensorFlow is one example, it's not like TensorFlow does what you need, but you need to write your Python program to use TensorFlow. And you need to know a mm. little bit about the GPU and how it works, but the core that's actually using it is already written and optimized for it by someone else. Is yes. this so, the way yeah, it is? That's yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. So most of the time, like this GPU with the GPU, you don't just get get the card and walk out of the shop. Like you get a bunch of software with the GPU. Well, like when we install a GPU, it comes with a bunch of software, and that software usually like like already has a lots of stuff in it, like like libraries for for doing these calculations, and then these higher level like libraries like TensorFlow or MATLAB or whatever, they know how to formulate their problems in terms of these uh, driver level libraries. So in, in Triton, we most of our GPUs are uh, NVIDIA GPUs. So we have, we have one AMD GPU for testing stuff, but, but most of our stuff is in a, uh, NVIDIA GPUs where we have the CUDA framework or NVIDIA has the CUDA framework of, you might have heard this term. So it's this kind of like li bunch of stuff that a uh, bunch of libraries that can utilize the G GPUs with, so that you don't have to like write your own stuff, mm -hmm. but your code needs to be like, it needs to use the CUDA to access the GPU. Mm -hmm. And if in the CSC side, if you like, if you want to play with Lumi, you need to deal with AMD's own library, which is this Rock M library, which is the same feature, same kind of stuff as, as CUDA has. Yeah. So How? there's like, but usually you need to like look at the certain words. Like if you find CUDA somewhere in the documentation, it usually means that the code tries to use G uh, NVIDIA GPUs. If it, if it mentions Rock M, 
it usually mentions the means that it tries to use AMD GPUs. So how so, many common programs can use AMD GPUs these days? Uh, I, I would guess that the support is increasing and increasing, but the NVIDIA has a bit of a, like a lead when it comes to this uh, competition currently, mm -hmm. but uh, nobody will know what the future will uh, okay. will bring with it. Yeah. So let's see, but, have we covered yeah. most of the introduction or did you have more there? Yeah, like uh, I'll mention that in in uh, in Triton, uh, we like we mentioned yesterday, it's a heterogeneous cluster. So we have multiple different kinds of uh, of uh, nodes, multiple different kinds of places like machines, and we have multiple different GPU architectures as well. So we have architectures running all the way from Kepler to the modern Ampere. Mm -hmm. uh, so so. Kepler, Pascal, Volta, Ampere. There's mm -hmm. three, four different architectures uh, of four different types of cards, and these are like, like if we are talking about GPU cards, if you think about like you buy a gaming card somewhere from a from a Verco Cup, uh, I don't know, like some some uh, some online retailer, Amazon, you bought buy a, like a uh, like a gaming card. These are much more powerful. So these are mm -hmm. like. They're much more powerful, like so, uh, four times more powerful than like how, a typical gaming card that you would have in your. How, how do you uh, define power then? Is it in speed or memory or? Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the power is not necessarily like speed as in like gigahertz or something like that. It's not clock frequency usually. They might even run at the slower clock frequency in the cluster. But mm -hmm. the power comes in the number of parallel like computational units. So mm -hmm. each of these cards is usually like a cluster in and of itself. So it contains mm -hmm. like a huge bunch of co small computational units that can calculate these matrix calculations and vector calculations. And uh, so the power comes that they can run bigger problems uh, with and they have the, like the specialized co like sp compute units inside them that can do even better calculations. Like they have these optimizations inside them meant for scientific calculation, uh, so that they are much faster. At, let's say floating like uh, single or double precision floating point numbers, or the specialized cases for scientific computing. They also usually have like a bunch of more memory, like this VRAM mm. uh, or like video r random access memory mm -hmm. uh, that is like for the memory for the card itself. So basically, whenever you run some GPU code, usually stuff gets transferred to the GPU where it gets to the memory of the GPU and it's calculating inside of the memory, uh, inside the mm. card itself. Mm -hmm. And whenever there's some re like results need to be brought back, it will, uh, they're brought to the CPU and the random access memory of yeah. the uh, of the machine itself where they can be then accessed. Okay. And is the memory bandwidth a limiting factor? Yes. Often, often the factor like people uh, there's often a case where people send, let's say, a job to Triton and they, they don't notice much improvement in when they run it you know, on the GPU in Triton compared to GPU in their own machine. And the problem might be that the data is not, it's not getting to the GPU. The GPU is too fast for the, for the amount of data that goes there. So these GPU cards, they are very powerful. And that means that if you give them like a, like a, like a simple addition to calculate, they are done with it and then it's just idle. Mm -hmm. And all of the time is done doing this communication between the, the processing unit, the CPU and the GPU. So, so often you need to usually have more than one CPU trying to uh, uh, deal with the GPU to give it enough stuff to do. So you can think of it like if you have this office situation where you have these different people working in this office, and then you have one person who's like super expert, and that super expert can answer questions really quickly. But he like if if nobody asks asks uh, what what the super expert thinks, they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So so basically, there's this one dude who's uh, really good, but you really need to put him in <laughs> to work. Like you need to manage that one dude. And basically, everybody in the office can ask as the super efficient uh, person their problems, and the super efficient person will will mm-hmm. give you an answer. But if nobody asks uh, him, well, nothing like he's not doing anything. And this is basically mm-hmm. the situation with GPUs. Like GPUs need to be fully utilized in order to get mm-hmm. the most benefit out of it. And this also brings to mind like the different generations I mentioned. So running on the newest one isn't usually the best option if you don't need it. Because mm-hmm. like you're if you're only utilizing, let's say, 50% of the earliest generation, you're going to utilize like a 10% of the newest generation and your code will run as slow as it does. <laughs> so usually it's better to run more instances of the slower generation than with a let's say array job you use an array job for slower generation than to um, try to utilize the newest uh, generation and also adding more gpus doesn't usually work unless your code knows what it's doing like you mm-hmm. you can run multiple gpu jobs on triton but then you again need your code mm-hmm. needs to be able to communicate mm-hmm. the tasks like adding more experts to the room doesn't help if nobody asks them like mm-hmm. that doesn't really benefit the benefit the overall efficiency of the system yeah so okay so what's the moral of the story here i guess gpus are like they're easier to use because more software support th- supports them but harder to use because there's more and more you need to know in order to use it efficiently. And there's more and more things that can go wrong. Yeah, basically it's this kind of a situation, like if you have like a supercar and you want to drive really, really fast, you need to like reserve like a, some ring. You need to reserve some, some uh, circuit where you can r- drive with the supercar and you may, must make certain that there's no like slow drivers there. You, there's no bottlenecks or like there's no uh, like um, traffic lights on that circuit because otherwise you're just running slow. <laughs> like you're not getting, you're not going to go 200 miles an hour with a supercar if the if you're going through the center of the city because mm-hmm. like the speed limit is 40. So it's important to make certain that. Uh, when you're utilizing GPUs, you keep the GPU fully occupied. And there was a, already a question about, like, in Triton specific, like, why is like is GPUs available on the on the uh, Jupyter notebook? And mm-hmm. the answer is no, because of this reason. Like, it's so hard to keep the GPU o- occupied, and they are expensive cards, and they are very uh, lucrative. Like, a lot of people request resources for them so we want to keep them fully utilized and interactive usage basically means that whenever you're not doing something yourself the gpu will just idle and that will basically mean that Mm -hmm. it's burning like uh, money all the time okay and and like usually i would say like don't be alarmed by all of this it might seem like okay i'm not I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of using the GPUs. Not, that's not the point. The point is to to uh, make certain that you are actually benefiting yourself. Because mm-hmm. if you're not mm-hmm. using, if you have like a supercar but you're driving uh, in the c- yeah. city, it's not uh, so it's like... not benefiting you because you're you're not having any fun. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. better to usually we recommend that you test out a, like a training version of your program like some sort of like a like a mock-up of your program mm-hmm. like smaller program shorter runtime or something like that you test it out first on uh on your like if your department or your research group has provided you with a workstation with a gpu like this mm-hmm. commercial gpu you first test it out and see how it performs there and then you you might test it also we have in alto at least we have these uh workstations that are shared in these classrooms that you can also try out stuff there mm-hmm. you try try out some toy models try out if the if in principle it should work efficiently mm-hmm. in the cluster and if it does then you run it in the cluster and you test it out there 
and if it runs efficiently yeah. then you can just like yeah fire away and maybe i guess we could also say if you're ever not sure just try it run a few tests then come by and consult with our research software engineer service and we can go look with you at your stuff for an hour or something or you know even like check your stats and say good to go just like you've done it well and if not we can help you figure out what the bottlenecks are and improve it so don't feel that you're alone in figuring all of this out okay um should we go on to some examples of using it now yeah okay so here we are at gpu jobs so i guess by now if we know everything we know about slurm we know it must be some simple option to add and that must be like what i see here the sbatch command indeed so so, so um, yeah the the gpus in 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 the eyes of a slurm uh, of the slurm queue they are these generic resources or grass uh, so they are like resources that are more than like something special, something special compared to like the normal CPUs and the memory that the compute nodes have. Mm -hmm. So did, they are mentioned or they are like marked internally as these kind of like uh, resources available that you can then request. And then when you request them, uh, then Slurm will limit your, uh, well, limit you to like those nodes that can fulfill that request. Mm -hmm. So uh, in other systems, you might need to uh, specify a partition, for example. You need to specify like, OK, I want to run on a GPU specific partition. In Triton, we don't have that, but uh, be mindful of that. But usually, you need to only specify that I want this generic resource to be present. Mm -hmm. And in case of GPUs, you basically say that I want GPU colon one to have one mm -hmm. two for two three for four but again remember adding more gpus doesn't necessarily make it faster yeah would you like to give a demonstration or is there even anything to really demonstrate here hmm. mm -hmm. so well, well I, can... I guess we've shown the basic idea here you want to talk about the machine learning frameworks or yeah, like what do you think is the best order here? Like, I guess basically what we've been saying so far is what people mostly start with. And then from there, it mm -hmm. depends on your particular framework. So there's the how to request it and how to use it in your code. And we mainly talk about how to request it. Yeah, because like it's, it's very specific, like the requests are usually the same, you just add I want a generic resource, I want a GPU. And then if it's a MATLAB code, it, you use GPU array. If it's a, like a Python code, you call TensorFlow or something. Uh, if it's a, like you run some lump simulation or something, it, then you just run that and it will use the GPU. So the request side is, is the same all the way through usually. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nothing nothing magical i can i can for example run the, the okay. tensorflow example yeah uh, are you sharing your screen uh just a second i think it's better if you oh. do it because my cat is not going to let me be typing here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this it's it's getting fr uh, late in friday and and the cat wants to go and have a Enjoy the weekend. So. <laughs> it wants its food in 33 minutes. Yeah. OK, so here you go. Yeah, so here uh, we have, like, this is from TensorFlow's tutorials. Uh, like, OK, it has been uh, well, it moved, changed. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully this. Let's uh, if it... OK, the, the Example code example still works because I have a uh, we have done minimal changes to it so it should work so uh, but the tutorials itself have moved but let's say you want to run some like this is like a typical um, MNIST classification problem that uses like these convolutional neural network layers 
to to do like a simple simple deep learning problem like this is something that you can run on a cpu as well so this is like super super easy on the tpu but um so it's nothing complicated so i, I download first the file um and then let's look at this um sbat script so or maybe i'll just write it like myself so I'll write this TensorFlow example.sh and I do the usual liturgies. So <laughs> sbatch. By now, you should uh, hopefully you're uh, like uh, accustomed to this syntax. So it's nothing mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, you usually when you write, you just write this uh, like automatically. Uh, nothing special here. Let's add a bit more memory here. I'm not. I can't remember how much memory it actually requested, but so we, now we have the normal time, normal time and memory requirements that we need. And this is such a simple model uh, that it doesn't require multiple CPUs to do data loading. Usually, the like the deep learning stuff, you need to have multiple GP, uh, CPUs to fill the uh, GPU with data. But in this case, the data is so small that it's not necessary. So we can already go with Gress GPU one. So give us any GPU, Do mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And then we give Python uh, and the name of the Python code. Uh, but before that, actually, I forgot. Uh, I will have to load Anaconda. Uh, so so different sites have probably the different ways of develop uh, like distributing so software. But in, in Triton here, we have these Anaconda modules that contain basic, like uh, basic installations of PyTorch and TensorFlow and all kinds of Python packages. So like mm -hmm. they, it contains already the TensorFlow that you need. Yeah, there was a question so on HackMD. Can you install a newer versions of TensorFlow? And yes, you can install your own Anaconda environments. Yes. Or yeah, ask if you us look at the auto update. Yes, if you look at our Python documentation, there's instructions on how to create your own environments. And of course, in those environments, if you want to use GPUs, you need to make certain that the CUDA, these CUDA toolkits are installed as well. So you can, um, they know how to utilize the GPUs. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's run this example with sbatch. So. So it's now pending. So, so now it's running on one of the nodes with uh, V100 cards. And I'll use tail to look at the output. So you see uh, lots of this litany of text at the start where it actually it, uh, it chooses which uh, GPU card to use and all kinds of stuff. And then it's doing the actual training. So here it's doing five epochs of training and it's like 98% good at classification. So this is like a simple model, but but you can put whatever you want there in your uh, code. So, so whatever, oops, wrong program, whatever, uh, whatever GPU code you have, you only need to add this. Then if your code uh, requires a specific architecture, you might want to specify this uh, constraint parameter in, in the GPU, well, it's somewhere here, that you can, you can specify, this might be auto specific, but uh, different sites have different conventions probably here, but but you can use this constraint parameter to limit yourself to certain GPUs, uh, certain architectures. So, okay, let's look at yeah. the there's, GPU monitoring. There's one important point here. So mm -hmm. you may remember the S run we would put before commands to profile them individually. So in theory, that should be done here but the latest version of Slurm has some sort of, well, we don't know if it's a bug or... Uh, um, yeah. 
something else, but it if you put the S run there, it won't get allocated the GPU. So yes, yeah, yeah. So so this is all the specific stuff, and we are fixing it on in a process of fixing it. And at that point, we'll probably do some changes to this syntax as well. We'll we'll switch to this newer syntax, but. You don't have to worry about it. We'll uh, notify you if something changes, uh, something in the in the uh, syntax changes. But currently, before we have fixed it, we will let you know if, once we have fixed it. But uh, don't put S run on to on front of the GPU code in in Triton, because uh, you might it might hang like because it cannot get access to the GPU. That's unfortunate, but uh, like. Yeah, it's it's a uh, like this annoying bug that we encountered last mm -hmm. uh, autumn when we updated our Slurm version. So don't be alarmed yeah. by it. If you if you get errors or your code doesn't produce any output when you're running it through uh, through the queue with GPUs, try checking if there's S run on top of it. If there is, then take the S run out and try again. So that's unfortunate, but it's really good point by Richard. Okay, so it ran. Do we check? Yeah, let's check. Like uh, this might also be. So let's. This might also be uh, all the specific. Uh, might be in other sites. Uh, yeah, I think it's but... probably alto specific. How do yeah, other sites but... monitor there? GPU performance. I'm not completely certain. One way, one way to monitor GPU performance is that if you have something running on a node, you might, you can temporarily SSH to the node and use this NVIDIA SMI to to check the GPU utilization. There's other tools as well, and we are in a process of creating better documentation on how to monitor because this is like a, like a can of worms that is pretty unfortunate like the gpu utilization is sometimes hard to get out of the system so but in, in alto you can use this specific magic that i always just look at the documentation you just need to know that the doc it's there in the documentation yeah. uh, if you go put the search bar gpu monitoring you will get here and uh, if you put the job id there you can get GPU monitoring if the program has run long enough. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'll add here, like um, yeah. And uh, also, occasionally there's bugs with these things. So yeah. basically, it might randomly not be producing the GPU stats. Yeah. So so this might be something that if you are interested in in monitoring your yeah. GPU sets, you might want to. Uh, yeah. So you might want to consider uh, joining us in Garage and, mm -hmm. and discussing with us how to monitor it and yeah. how to do performance testing. Or but, like, uh, yeah, like make an issue. One option about is it. to like when you when the job runs. Uh, like if this GPU performance, you can, um, you can go to the node and run NVIDIA SMI. Yeah, and it will tell you what the. GPU utilization is if there's something running on the GPU. Yeah, but if you try to do this GPU monitoring and you don't get any results out, then definitely open an issue or come to our garage because this is our problem and something yeah. that we need to fix for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of like this GPU compared to like the SF, which is a really great tool of monitoring the CPU performance and the memory performance. The GPU performance it is it's a lot more nebulous, but it's yeah. very important. Like, like uh, similarly that what we talked about, like recognizing the scaling, like mm -hmm. recognizing if something it should, should, is supposed to run faster. Like if you run something on your, your own laptop and it, you run it on Triton and then it's suddenly slower or run it in a cluster and it's suddenly slower, you know that, okay, I expected it to be faster. There might be some configuration option that I overlooked. Maybe I didn't book enough CPUs for the job that it got in the laptop. 
uh, without like any specifications. Similarly, if you're doing like GP training on a workstation, and then you think that, okay, I want to run it on a cluster, I want to make it faster, and then it's some, somehow slower in the cluster, you know that, okay, there's again, there was this assumption that it's faster, but it's not. It's not that the hardware is broken. It's not that the system is like the machines are somehow flawed. There's, of course, there's, it's more of a, there's, there's a barrier of <laughs> implementation and they, it can get tricky. And in those cases, it's best to just come and ask us and, and discuss with us so that we can look at your specific case. Yeah. Because there's no one sure way of like doing it. But just like being uh, mindful of that feeling that, okay, like, why isn't this faster when I thought mm -hmm. it was? Like, if you recognize that feeling and you recognize that situation, you know that, okay, this, this has to be something. There has to be a better way. And then you realize that, okay, uh, like, these guys are meant to be uh, maintaining the system. Ask them, why isn't this faster? And mm -hmm. then we can try and help you. Okay, so we have 20 minutes left. Um, what is left? The monitoring, input, output. Yeah, are we, what else is there to discuss? Yeah, there was an interesting question. How much extra, actually, no, let's go to questions at the end. Are we basically at the end of this? We've talked about the input output. Do you want to show a list of the different available GPUs? And then there's exercises. Yeah, so we have, like I mentioned, we have these K80s, then we have these P100s, then we have these V100s and these A100s, and some of these V100s are have this NV link, which is this fast interconnect, so that you can run faster multi-processing or multi-GPU jobs. But then again, your frameworks needs to support it uh, to be able to utilize this NV link, so mm -hmm. it's more advanced. And uh, if you feel like you're, yeah, you want to utilize it, then uh, do, do come and discuss with us if yeah. you want to check how it performs. There's also like uh, this AMI, MI100 uh, machine that is for, uh, that has this M, uh, AMD GPU. So if you want to try out like GPU codes, if you want to like test bed something that you might want to run as later on in in CSC machines, maybe maybe you want to make your code compatible with AMD. But if you're writing like GPU code and you want to make your code compatible with AMD GPUs, mm -hmm. do ask us about that and we can help you with that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are any of these exercises? Let's see. Do you want to do the exercises as demos? Yeah. And also, maybe, maybe I'll I give can. a reminder, please look at the bottom of HackMD and answer our feedback survey about what was good and bad if you're leaving early. Um, yeah, no, yeah, you can also okay. describe what you would want to learn or what kind of topics would interest you in the, in the future. Uh, like... Uh, so, so that uh, we can we can then focus on that and maybe make a full course out of some subtopic of the of the course or some topic that was mentioned in passing, but uh, yeah. you will want to learn more about. Okay, so let's let's run this Nvidia SMI utility. So this is okay. like a yeah. like this exercise one. So this is a utility that will like show you the GPU cards available. Uh, so. If I, if I run it uh, without, uh, let's try running like that, that 
like that. I just S run NVIDIA SMI. So I didn't specify here the GPU resource that I wanted to use. So this means I won't get a GPU resource. I will get some compute mm. node without a GPU. And because there's no GPU, there's no NVIDIA utilities, so there's no NVIDIA SMI, so yeah. it will give you me an error. Mm -hmm. So let's run now with the GPU specified. So press GPU one. So now when I run it uh, through the queue in some compute node, it will give me, let's see if I can make it a bit better. Okay, yeah, that looks nice. So, so. the output looks like this. So I got into one of the GPU nodes with V100 card mm -hmm. with 32 gigabytes of uh, memory. And there was nothing running there because mm -hmm. I wasn't running anything. But but basically, I could have run something there. Yeah. OK. Also, uh, I would probably quickly mention that if you're running some GPU jobs that, let's say, like training machine learning models or deep learning and stuff like that, it's a good idea to, to make certain first that it runs like, runs like let's say, a small amount of time before you put it into like five days of running because mm. like uh, in general like this applies to other jobs as well you might want to check that your code runs like small time before you run it the full time because like you don't want to have like a typo at the end of your script just before <laughs> you save the output mm -hmm. uh, after five days of computations so um it might be a good idea to, especially with the GP resources, because they are more uh, like heavily, heavily queued upon. Uh, but but in general, it might be a good idea to to go through like this kind of incremental step where you first put some test job into the queue, see how it performs. If it performs better, uh, well, based on the test job, you set the memory limits, you set the time limit, uh, and then you put run it the full time. So reduced number of parameters, maybe maybe reduced runtime, maybe run only one iteration instead of 1,000, and check how it performs in that, then extrapolate from that information uh, the full job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I think the rest of the exercise are pretty like um, specific for whether you're yeah. Uh, compiling mm -hmm. uh, code, whether you're running certain frameworks. Yeah. Should we take some final questions then? Like broad questions about any topic? Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's also a good question there. Uh, one, one question that how much faster should the job be on a GPU compared to CPU? So the question like but typically it, it ranges between a problem like if it's usually something around like maybe nowadays it's like 20 to 40 times like 20 to 40 cpus worth of uh of of calculating time in, in some deep learning stuff it might be even 100 100 times 200 times like you need a huge bunch of CPUs to do machine learning training compared to uh, GPUs, especially because of the yeah. like the communication that needs to happen. So, so usually, like if it's like uh, orders of tens of CPUs. So if you, if your code runs on one CPU, it takes an it takes an day or like full full it takes full um, uh, like uh, twenty four hours to run. I would guess that uh, like Mm -hmm. To be worth to run it on a GPU, I would probably it has to run in two three hours max. So mm -hmm. so you need something like ten at least tenfold efficiency for the GPU. It depends on the mm -hmm. GPU, and the main thing is that like do you even then utilize the full GPU? Yeah, but you can get like you can get like ten to hundred times faster uh, running yeah. on GPU, but it depends on the algorithm. Some things are not good for GPU, and 
it's better to run like a let's say instead of running GPU job, run an array job of single yeah. processors that might get you much much more stuff done. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 